Whether you own an APS-C or a full-frame camera, at some stage you'll be looking for a reliable 50mm lens because every photographer needs one in their bag. But what constitutes a suitable 50mm? Some photographers rave about the very features that others reject. That is the dilemma we face with the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 USM lens. Let's dive deep and find out. For our purposes, one can say that lenses are divided into two categories, prime and variable. Prime lenses have a fixed focal length, whereas variable lenses, as you would guess from the name, can zoom in and out. Whilst zoom lenses offer you the convenience of zooming in and out without having to move, prime lenses have the advantage of providing sharper images. The EF 50mm f1.4 USM is a prime lens with a focal length of 50mm on a full frame camera and a maximum aperture of f1.4. A 50mm fixed length lens reproduces what your eyes are taking the most notice of in a scene. Because of this, 50mm lenses are basically considered standard. Bear in mind that a 50mm is only 50mm on a full frame camera. If you have a crop sensor, the focal length changes. You can look up the crop factor of your brand or camera, but on Canon it's 1.6. This means that a 50mm lens on a Canon crop sensor is the equivalent of 80mm. This isn't vital to know, as you won't run into this too much, but it's handy information. The EF 50mm f1.4 USM lens feels solid in your hand, but not particularly heavy. It is a small lens measuring 2.9 by 2 inches, and weighs in at 10.2 ounces or 290 grams, making it a very lightweight lens indeed. That being said, you will still notice it on your camera. Of course, it achieves this way because it is made primarily of high quality polycarbonate plastic, although it does have the all electronic EF metal mount. The front glass is recessed into the lens, which means that you may not feel the need for a UV filter when you have this lens on your camera. That being said, I'd still recommend using one as it protects the glass from impact. Better yet, I'd recommend getting a variable ND filter, as it will not only protect the more expensive glass, but it will also give you more options when shooting video. Overall, the build quality is good. Its compact size makes it easy to carry around and comfortable to handle. The lens is not weather sealed, so you will need to consider that if you plan to shoot outside in all weathers. However, many photographers report that they have owned an EF 50mm f1.4 USM for years and their lenses are still going strong. I've personally owned mine for around a year, I've used it in all sorts of conditions and it's chugging along just fine. The EF 50mm f1.4 USM has a generous aperture range, moving from a wide open f1.4 to a tiny f22. At f1.4, the lens gives an extremely shallow depth of field, or borka. At this setting, focusing on your subject's eyes will see the body and possibly even parts of the face become out of focus. This is usually ideal for headshots and portraits. It's all art, so it's incredibly subjective, but a focus on the eye with everything else slowly falling out of focus tends to be rather flattering. Also at f1.4, this lens lets in a lot of light even when you're shooting indoors. This can negate the need for a flash, which is a positive in many photographers' books. It's worth noting that this lens lets in a 66% more light at f1.4 than Canon's 50mm f1.8. This can make a significant difference if your lighting options are limited. Over the years, there have been many tests performed on this lens. There is little to no distortion or vignetting in your photos when using an APS-C camera at f1.4, but some have expressed that you will see both on a full-frame camera at this aperture. That being said, the problem, if you see it as such, disappears by f2.8. I personally don't worry about stuff like that because my photos are intended for a larger audience, 
not necessarily photographers who will inspect every pixel of my photos. As far as I'm concerned, technical imperfections are irrelevant as long as the photo makes you feel something or has that wow factor. This is personally my favorite photography lens and I use it all the time for all sorts of photos, from portraits to product photography. The f1.4 and other wide apertures on the Canon EF50mm f1.4 USM are perfect for available light shooting. This is an equally useful lens for low light, indoor photography, especially when a flash is not permitted, such as in a church. It can also produce beautiful low light videos, creating stunning stormy sea sequences or dramatic city lights views. Do bear in mind that when it comes to video, this lens is best used with a tripod, due to it not having any image stabilization. Additionally, the higher focal length will make camera shake more obvious. The extra small micro USM or ultrasonic motor provides the power for autofocus on this lens. When manually focusing, you have to turn the focus ring a very long way in your quest for that perfect focus, as it turns a long path around 200 degrees. The good thing is that it allows a precise manual focusing, but in handheld filmmaking, you have to keep turning and turning the ring, and that can become annoying over time. That's not really an issue, as you can just rely on Canon's magical autofocus. Another slight problem occurs because the lens does not boast image stabilization. This can result in camera shake, especially in video mode. There are a few known problems with the EF 50mm f1.4 USM, and the general feeling among photographers is that it's time Canon did an upgrade on this lens and fixed the flaws once and for all. The common complaint is with the autofocus. It's beautifully smooth and quiet when new, but after a year or more of use, it apparently often develops a noisy, scratchy sound. This is bad enough during still photography, but it also renders the lens too loud for video work. This is not something that I've personally experienced though. Another problem lies with the focus ring. When new, the ring is smooth and quiet, but over time it can become stiff. The third complaint generally level at this lens is that it doesn't perform well against bright light. It may be fantastic for low light work, but shows low contrast levels and flaring when looking towards the light source. This can be a common problem among lenses designed before digital cameras came out. As far as I'm concerned, none of these are real issues for me personally, as I don't use this lens for video and I rely on Canon's magical autofocus. The EF 50mm f1.4 USM can be mounted on full frame cameras, as well as cropped APS-C models. It can even be used on Canon mirrorless cameras when using an adapter. A 50mm lens is a useful all-round workhorse, Indeed, many photographers make it their go-to lens and keep it on their cameras most of the time. This is absolutely the case with me. My 50mm is always mounted on my Canon 77D and it all fits snugly in my Low Pro Pro Tactic 450AW2. The angle of view is wide enough to get most scenes whether you're talking about street scenes, buildings, displays or more. At the same time, it beautifully emphasizes the subject in portrait shots too. On an APS-C camera, this lens will be cropped and you get a 35mm equivalent focal length of 80mm. This isn't necessarily a problem, although it has the effect of zooming in slightly on a landscape, so you won't see much of the view. You may prefer the use of this lens for portraits or closer work than shoot landscapes with a different lens on your cropped frame camera. So, where does this lens excel? One area is street photography. You will often find that with the 50mm focal length, the area and frame is just right. This lens makes it easy to compose balanced images. Your subject stands out, yet there is room to create interest beyond. Another reason for the EF 50mm f1.4 USM success in walk-around shooting is that its size makes it seem unobtrusive on the camera. People can forget that you are photographing them and that often results in a beautiful, spontaneous looking shot. Similarly, this is well known as an excellent portrait lens, both for full body shots and more close-up images. 
As well as that, the EF 50mm f1.4 will also achieve satisfying action shots, as well as wildlife and casual family shots. Sitting in a restaurant, you can snap a perfectly formed head and shoulders portrait across the table, then take a few steps back and include the whole group. The pros and cons around the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 should be considered in light of its price. It has been designed as a mid-level option amongst Canon's free 50mm lens offerings, the others being the budget 50mm f1.8 and the newer, more expensive 50mm f1.2L. If you want to know how much these cost in your area, including every other item that I mentioned in this video, I have links down below. So, has the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 stood up to the test of time, and is it a lens worth buying today? The lens is lightweight, with low distortion and a fast focus system. It is versatile, allowing the photographer many options when it comes to capturing perfect pictures. Despite its age and issues, this is still the one that many photographers keep as their primary lens. So, even though it could do with an overhaul to modernize and fix the AF faults, the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 USM lens remains the workhorse of choice for many photographers out there, including myself. If you've been practicing photography for a while with your kit lens that came with the camera, I'd absolutely recommend getting this as your second lens. If you want a slightly more in-depth review with more info, you can find it over at skiesaudio.com. I've included a link down below. Also, if you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, or see how much they cost in your country, I have links down below where you can view them. Finally, since a lot of you seem to like my voice, I've created a meditation channel where I post every week. If you want to check it out, I have a link down below for that as well. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.